So the title of this lecture today is Operation Occupy Territory. Operation Occupy Territory. For our scripture reading, if you have your Bible, let's turn to the book of Joshua, the first chapter, starting at the 10th verse. The book of Joshua, the first chapter, starting at the 10th verse, and I have Brother Omar um, putting it up on the screen for some version. Some people may not have this new international version, and if you don't, um, here it is. I'm not sure if there's a way to make the text a little bit bigger, Omar, but if it is, then go ahead and help the people out with that. So, this book of Joshua, um, there's a little history about the book of Joshua. Uh, the prophet Moses, who brought the people of children, the children of Israel out of Egypt, he's died. Those people who came out of that wilderness with them, all of them, all the people that came out of, out of Egypt with, with uh, Moses, they died too. The only, only two of them lived, and they were Joshua and Caleb. God used one of them to take them into the promised land. That's Joshua. This book is about going into the promised land. Amen. So Joshua says in, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 10 to 15, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land. Repeat after me, take possession, take possession. Of, the land. of the land. The Lord your God is giving you for your own. But to the Rumanites, the Gadites, the half-tribe of the Manasseh, Yahshua said, remember the command that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you after he said, the Lord your God will give you rest by giving you this land. Your wives, your children, and your livestock may stay in the land that Moses gave you east of the Jordan, but all you fighting men ready for battle must cross over ahead of your fellow Israelites. You are to help them until the Lord gives them rest. And as he has done for you, until they too have taken possession of the land the Lord your God is giving them. After that, you may go back and occupy your own land, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you east of the Jordan toward the sunrise. And for a supporting verse, a supporting text to this text, I'm choosing Joshua. You're going to stay right there, Joshua. You're going to go up from where you were up a few verses and go to verse 5. Joshua 1, verse 5 and verse 6. Joshua 1, verse 5 and verse 6 in the New International Version says this. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to your ancestors to give them. Let the church say amen. 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 As I prayed and sought the Lord for a theme for this year, 2012, the Lord led me to a theme idea. Operation Occupy Territory. Repeat after me. Operation, Operation. Occupy Territory. Occupy. One more time. Operation, Operation. Occupy Territory. Now, I can barely hear you. I, I, I can't hardly really hear you. Let me try it again. Operation, Operation. Occupy, Occupy Territory. territory. Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I heard you that time. Now, Operation Occupy Territory is taking spiritual authority over our community. We are still, we are sitting in church on purpose to take it to the street. By this I mean occupy new territory. Some of you have already occupied some territory. You got your house, you got your neighborhood, you got your community. But we are occupying some new territory in 2012. This year's theme is at once both a confrontational and militaristic. Occupy, Operation Occupy Territory is both confrontational and militaristic. The militaristic concept comes from the word operation. In our day, an operation is not only what takes place in a hospital, but it's what takes place on a battlefield. Our battlefield is multi-dimensional. You should be somewhere near your, some, you might have got your first blank field right there. 
our battlefield is multi-dimensional. It's in the earth realm. It's in the inner realm, the mind and the soul, and it's in the spirit realm. So we have a multi-dimensional battlefield. We are on a military campaign to take spiritual authority on these three primary fronts in our community. Today, we call military campaigns operations like Operation Desert Storm, which suggests a ferocious force, Operation Scorched Earth, and Operation Enduring Freedom. These are all military operations on various battlefields. A military operation is an organized offensive attack. This year, we will be on the offensive rather than the defensive. Did you hear what I said? This year, we as a community of believers are going to be on the offensive, like offensive football. We're going to be on the offensive rather than the defensive. In the name of Jesus. This year, we're going to have an altogether different mindset and approach. We're going to be offensive rather than defensive. Instead of taking stuff from the enemy of our souls, we're going to give him his stuff back. Well. We're going to give him hell for all the hell he caused us over the years. Anybody willing to do that with me? In the name of Jesus. Beginning today, we're going to run the dark enemies of the kingdom of God out of our church, out of our homes, out of our neighborhood, out of our communities, out of our individual lives. Let the church say amen. amen. Are we going to do this? Amen. We're going to run them up out of here in Jesus' name. We're going to shine so much light on the enemies of God that there will be no room for shadows. In Operation Occupy New Territory, we're going after three primary targets. Every military battle goes after a target. You know that, right? So we're going to go after three primary targets. Three, three primary enemies of our soul. We're not going to attack our arch rivals from childhood. You know, Pookie and them. We're not going to go get Pookie and them. We're not going to go back and try to pick up some old rivals. No, that's not what's going to happen this time. For the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians 6.12. In this occupation, Occupy New Territory, we are going after three targets called the big dogs. Say big dogs. Yeah. Who are the big dogs who are talk who, who are the big dogs we're talking about? They are, number one, the world system. You have that blank, you have a blank there for that? Yeah. The big dogs are, number one, the world system. We are going after the world system. The world system is going after us. It's trying to make us this slave. It's trying to make us this funky. So we're going after the world system. And then we're going after the devil himself, the devil, the adversary, the accuser of the brethren. And third, we're going after... I'm going to hold off on telling you that. Hold up a minute. Now these two alone, the world system and the devil, uh, they... If we're going to fight, we're going after them. We know already we're going to be in a big fight. Uh, it's going to be a huge fight. The world system and the devil, that's a huge fight. But this third big dog has been known to bring down the wisest of kings, the most prominent of pastors. This third enemy is the most dangerous of all because he does the most. He is the most wanted criminal slash outlaw. He is the biggest lawbreaker and the most ruthless terrorist, this dude is like Osama bin Laden himself. He's consistently doing dirt and going underground, hiding from the awareness. This evil booger is none other than... Do you really want to know who he is? Do you, do you really want to know who he is? This evil booger is... This evil booger is none other than this guy right here. Repeat after me. Enter me. Enter me. Enemy. Enemy. Repeat after me. Enemy. 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 Say it one more time. Enemy. Enemy. Now let's think about what this is. What am I talking about? I saw Clarence. Clarence was on it. Three big dogs. The world system, the devil, and inner me. Inner me. Inner me. You're talking about sleeping with the enemy. 
It's you and me, ourselves, our flesh, our mind, our soul, unchecked by the power of the Holy Spirit. The biggest dog, the biggest enemy, the biggest destroyer of our life is inner me. My God. Sometimes we call it the enemy. Though sometimes we're sleeping with the enemy, which is the inner me. This is why we need Jesus. We need Yahweh saved. We need Emmanuel God. God with us to occupy our soul. We want God to occupy our souls. Our soul is the territory. It is the ultimate battleground. In 2012, we're on a mission to occupy new territory for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This year, we're going to learn how to conquer the three personal avenues in which the inner me gets into our personal territory. How does he do that? The three avenues are the lust of the flesh. Repeat after me. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. Yes, that's what we desire. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. Yes, that's what we look at and want. And the pride of life. The pride of life. Repeat after me. The pride of life. The pride of life. That's what feeds our ego and gives us the big head. That's coming from 1 John 2.16. So we are on a military occupation to occupy new territory. The whole concept of occupying territory recently entered into the conscious minds around September the 17th, 2011. Anybody remember that? September 17th, 2011. All of a sudden we start hearing about occupy, occupy, occupy. About this time, September the 17th, 2011, a few brave souls came up with the idea of occupying Wall Street. Yeah. According to Wikipedia, Occupy Wall Street, or OWS, is a protest movement which began around September the 17th in 2011 in Zuccotti Park, located in New York City's Wall Street Financial District. Initiated by the Canadian activist group Adbusters, the protesters are against social and economic inequality, high unemployment, greed, as well as corruption and the undue influence of, cor of corporations, particularly from the financial services sector on the government. The protesters slogan are, we are the 99% refers to the growing income and wealth inequity in the United States between the wealthiest 1% and the rest of the population. The people finally, I'm talking about the people finally got angry about something and decided to do something about it. When they pondered the statistics of poverty and inequality, they could not stay seated and silent. They got up and with intent to occupy until their voices were heard. Now that's how the Occupy movement began. Listen to this. The top 1% of income earners have more than doubled their income over the last 30 years according to the Congressional Budget Office. The report released just, this, the report was released just as concerns of the Occupy Wall Street movement were beginning to enter the national political debate. According to the Congressional Budget Office, listen to this, between 1979 and 2007, the incomes of the top 1% of Americans grew by an average of 275%. Dang. The, the 1% income grew by 275%. Remember what they had, it grew at 275%. Now, during that same period, the 60% of Americans in the middle of the income scale saw their incomes rise by how much? There's my 275 percent. How much do you think the middle income people get around by? Anybody want to guess? Not 10. A little bit more than 10. How about 40 percent? 275 percent and our income just grew by 40 percent. Since 1979, the average pre-tax income of the bottom 90 percent of households has decreased by $900. So that means if, uh, since 1979, you used to have 900, you, you have money in 1979, now your income went down about $1,000. But guess what? But guess what? But guess what? The 1% people, their increase, their top 1%, their income increased by $700,000. So you can see why the people got mad. Now, if these statistics get you angry as humans, how much more should st st statistics about the status of human souls yes, yes. anger you? 
every day the enemy is playing tricks on the souls of the living. Every day about 146,000 people die in the world a day. Did you hear what I said? Every day about 146,000 people die in the world a day. And that's about 100 people dying per minute. The majority of these people are living and dying in their trespasses and sins and are going to a crisis eternity traditionally called what? Yeah. Hell. We need some people to get upset about the condition of people living and dying in their sins and, and living purposeless lives. Lives which are now filling up our jails and filling up our health care systems and, and filling up our emergency rooms and filling up our graveyards. We must make a difference and we are going to make a difference in every way. Let the church say amen. 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 We as a community of believers will open up our eyes and our hearts to the lost souls of this world. God is calling us to occupy new territory. Our theme for this year is not only partially inspired by Occupy Wall Street movement. These are protesters who looked at injustice in the world and decided that they would do something about it. I believe God is calling us to take a similar stand. I hear God calling us to a higher sense of responsibility for the conditions of our community. We, in 2012, are going to do our part. We are going to have to sit in. We're going to have some sit-ins and some shut-ins. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, the church, we're going to have some sit-ins and shut-ins. What are you talking about, Pastor? We are going to sit in and shut in in our church on purpose in order that we can take the good news of God's love to humanity and to the streets. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. We are going to sit in church for the purpose of gaining a voice. We are going to gain a prophetic voice of God and we are going to sound the alarm. In 2012, we are going to lift our voice to God like we've never done before. We are going to pray on the behalf of the 99. We will raise our voice and raise ourselves to take spiritual authority in our homes, our streets, and our community. We are like the children of Israel. We have come this far through the wilderness. We have left old sinful Egypt. And it's now time for us to occupy new territory. It's now time for us to take the promised land. This land, this territory is spiritual promised land. Uh, uh, the, the promised land that our forefathers prayed for. The promised land of the free. The home of the brave. For we're going to be free from sin and brave in the Holy Spirit. Did you hear me? We're going to be free from sin and brave in the Holy Spirit. This is the land of promise. The land that was promised to Abraham. And we're going to occupy it on the behalf of humanity in every way possible. Now how are we going to occupy? The word occupy has many dimensions. We're going to occupy like this. We're going to occupy new territory by engaging the attention of God and humanity on the behalf of the poor of the needy. We're going to be praying every time we come into this place. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to pray for the poor and needy among us. We're going to occupy that, the ears of God and we're going to call out to him, God, help our neighbor. God, help that daughter. Help that child who's out there selling their body and selling their drug on the street. Help them in the name of Jesus. We're going to occupy the space in the ears of God. We are going to take up the space of, the, of our parks and our neighborhoods, our communities and our homes. We are going to claim new territory for the kingdom of God. We will rule these areas with spiritual authority that God has given us. We will no longer allow Chesterfield Park just to be sitting there and people getting high in there all day long. We are not going to do that without us praying for Chesterfield Park. We're not going to do that and not let, let Van Ness Park just go to waste and let young people go on there. We're going to pray for Van Ness Park. We're going to pray for this community. We're going to pray for our neighbors. We are going to take up the authority. We're going to occupy these parks in the name of Jesus. I thank God I took Sister B, Sister Norma, Brother Lamine, and we went over to where? We went over to Van Ness Park. And we occupied for a little while. But we're going to be more deliberate about our occupying these parts of these neighborhoods. I took Sister Mother of uh, Garrett over with me, walking around the neighborhood, and we went and knocked on doors. We're going to do more of that, and we're going to encourage other people to come. We're going to occupy this neighborhood. It's a kingdom authority. We're going to take spiritual authority over it. We're not going to allow people to write graffiti and sell drugs in our neighborhood and not pray for their soul. Yeah, that's right. We're going to make a difference. We're going to fill our hearts with the word of God and allow his spirit to fill us, fill our homes. Allow his Holy Spirit to overflow into our lives, into our neighborhoods, and into our communities. We're going to occupy in every way possible. 
We are going to take hold and possession of the, what the enemy took from us. Yes. Oh yeah, the enemy took some stuff from us. Some of them took our houses. Some of them took our job. Some of them took our car. Some of them took our children. Some of them took our things. Oh yeah, we're going to get it back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to occupy joy once again. Yeah, some of us have been sad and depressed. But we're going to get our joy back in 2012. We're going to occupy happiness once again. We're going to occupy our homes and living. Some of us are living in fear and, dis and, de and depression and despair. Some of you calling it, you're so sad, so down. But we're going to take it back. We're taking our joy back. We're taking our happiness back. We're, taking our we're going to live in our homes. We're not going to just go to our homes and lay down. No, we're going to live in our homes. We're going to invite God and the Holy Spirit into our house. We're going to let him occupy our homes. And we're going to occupy that space. And we're going to be a blessing. Everybody's going to know that we love the Lord. We're going to hear praise music coming from out of our house. Yes. Oh, yeah, you might hear some thump thump. But some of that thump thump going to be thump thump for the Lord in Jesus' name. Yes. We're going to occupy. We're going to, take position of, we're going to take possession of the souls that the enemy took from the kingdom of God. We're going to be on the offensive. Some of these young people, some of these old people that we see walking down the street every day, all they have been has been taken captive by the enemy. That's right. By the enemy and the outer enemy. And we're going to pray and we're going to love and we're going to reach out and we're going to come and reach out to these people and we're going to take them souls back. We're going to translate people and take them out of the kingdom of darkness and get them into the kingdom of light. Yeah. We're going to occupy new territory. Somebody need to occupy new territory at work. Somebody need to occupy new territory on their job. Somebody need to occupy new territory at the gym. We're going to occupy new territory wherever we go. At school. You need to tell somebody about the living God Thank you, Lord. who loves us and cares for us. Oh yeah, we are protesting. Oh yeah, we're going to be a protest. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a protest, protest movement, right? But we're going to protest the rule of sin and darkness over the lives of our homes and our community. In 2012, we are going to declare Operation Occupy New Territory. We're taking spiritual authority over our community. We're going to sit in church on purpose for taking it to the streets. Now you might ask, how in the world are we going to do that, Pastor? I'm a scaredy cat. I'm afraid I can't do this. Number one, we're going to do what Ephesians says we're going to do in chapter 6. We're going to put on the what? Put on the full armor of God. We're going to gird up our loins with truth. We're going to put on the breastplate of righteousness. We're going to put on the helmet of salvation. Our minds delivered by salvation. We're going to shout our people with the preparation of the gospel. We're going to take up the shield of faith, which is able to quench every fiery dark of the enemy. We're going to take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we're going to cut off some heads of some, demon, some demons. We're going to be like David. We're going to use our faith and say, Goliath, you might be big. Oh, yeah, you might have thought you had our community. You might have thought you had my family. You might have thought you had my devil. I'm going to take your head off in the name of the Lord. We're going to rise up with the word of God. We're going to put the whole, that's number one. We're going to put on the whole armor of God. That's Ephesians chapter 6, right? And then what else are we going to do? We're going to do what Joshua told us to do. Let's look at this. I think I'm pretty sure about Joshua on this one. Let's look at this. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. I think we have that right. Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. Look at what the Bible says there. I'm going to have to have you put that up there. Is it up there, Omar? Joshua chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. In the, King, in the New International Version, it says this. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to what? Inherit the land. Repeat after me. Inherit the land. Inherit the land. So what is God telling us? How are we going to do this? How are we going to occupy this new territory? We're going to be strong and courageous because you, will, because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I swore to their ancestors to give them. Verse 7 says this. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous. Say prosperous. prosperous. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Say successful. successful. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have not I commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be disturbed. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. In this occupy, in this operation occupy new territory, 
we are going to do it like Joshua said we're going to do it. We are going to be strong and courageous in God. Amen? Amen. We are going to be obedient to God-given leadership. Remember how Joshua had to obey Moses? Some of y'all are going to have to stop rebelling against your pastoral authority. You're going to stop rebelling and you're going to be cooperative and labor with it. When you, when you do that, you will be blessed. Because I'm seeking God. And as I seek God, I ask Him for what you need and then you're going to follow in that and God's going to bless us. Follow me as I follow God. So we're going to do it by being obedient to our God-given leadership. We're going to keep God's word in our mouth and in our thoughts. We're going to keep God's word in our mouth and our thoughts. Instead of cursing people out, we're going to put some word of God in our mouth. We're going to, instead of cursing people, we're going to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to keep them in our thoughts. When we get up in the morning, we're going to think on good things. Not on evil things, not on wicked things, but think on good things. Not how bad this day is. How good is this day going to be? How blessed I am that God, I got up. How wonderful the sun is. We're going to do everything God's word tells us to do. How are you going to be the head? How are you going to be the victor? How are you going to be the lender if you're not following God's word? My God. If you're not eating God's word and receiving God's word, you can't be the head. You can't be the victor. You can't be the lender. You can be nothing but the borrower. The victim. <laughs> the tail. Have mercy. And we're going to do everything God tells us to do and we will not be afraid. Say, I ain't scared. Say it one more time. I ain't scared. Can you convince me that you're not scared? Say it like you mean it. I ain't scared. Hallelujah, because we're going to take new territory. This operation, what? Occupy territory. I assured them, but we're going to occupy new territory in the name of Jesus. And we thank Almighty God for what he's doing here. Now listen, saints. Listen, saints. The Lord gave me a prayer to go along with this. For your notes, if you want to know, we're just claiming the prayer. We're just claiming. We, what we're going to do, all we're doing is claiming what Abraham was promised. The Bible says in Genesis, the Bible says in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, Go from your country and your kindreds and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed by you. You are going to be the blessing because you are the children of Abraham. Amen. Listen to this. We are Abraham's spiritual children. And we are the generation that will claim this promised land. The Bible says in 15, Genesis 15, 18 to 21, On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. To your offspring I will give this land. Since we are God's Abraham's spiritual children, God wants to give us this new land. He wants to bless us abundantly. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to, we're going to pray for this blessing. We're going to pray for this encouragement. Now you should put up there 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. Some people know this already. Anybody know what's in 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10? Anybody know who's in the Bible scholar? What's this all about? 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. No one knows? Wow. 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. This is one of the best times because actually this first Chronicle 4, this is actually in the midst of one of them boring, boring, boring genealogies. You know how you read about and son of the son of this and the son of that and son of that. You'd be like, man, can we go on? Can we get on with this? But in that boring passage with this wonderful jewel that this one man, I um, think his name was Wilkinson, he picked up on. Listen to this. And in, in First Chronicle 4, you got it? First Chronicle 4, 9 through 10 says this. Jabez was a better man than his brothers, a man of honor. His mother had named him Jabez. Oh, the pain, saying a painful, oh, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm reading from, yeah, it doesn't look like that up there, does it? I'm reading from the Message Bible. So let me read it from the Message Bible quickly. I, I want to tell you that. It says this, Jabez was a better man than his brothers, a man of honor. His mother had named him Jabez. Oh, the pain, saying a painful birth. I bore him in great pain. Jabez prayed to God, prayed to the God of Israel. He said, bless me, oh bless me. Give me land, large tracts of land, and provide your personal protection. Don't let evil hurt me. And the Bible says, God gave him what he asked. Did you hear that? Now let's read it in this version and we can read it together. I'm sorry I did that to you. I didn't want to throw you off. 
It says, Jabez, the New International Version says this, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Anybody gave birth to a child in pain? Anybody gave birth to a child in pain? Oh, my goodness. And Jabez cried out to God, to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free of pain. And God granted his request. Please stand with me. I'm about to close. I'm going to let you out. You're going to get out of here before 1 o'clock. So this is the beginning of a new journey called Operation Occupy Territory. And by that we mean Occupy some new territory. Somebody's going to occupy a new school. Somebody's going to occupy a new career. Somebody's going to occupy a new house. Somebody's going to occupy a new marriage. Somebody's going to occupy a new car. Somebody's going to occupy a new realm of spirits of influence. Someone's going to occupy some new territory. We're going to claim some new soul. We're going to do some great things in 2012. And we're going to just, just follow the lead of Jabez on today. We're going to ask God, would you please Enlarge our territory. Would you please give us new territory, new spiritual influence? And I just think that just like he did, you ever heard of what he's done for one, he'll do for others? I just think that if we ask God to enlarge our territory, he just might do it. Anybody have faith enough to believe that God for that? In the name of Jesus. So lift your hands to God and repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for occupying us. Now, help us to occupy new territory for your namesake and for your glory. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would enlarge our territory. And help us, O oh Lord, to maintain the new territory that you've given us in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. This is our new theme for the year 2012. I hope that you will be encouraged and that you will be blessed. Our church is a loving church. Our church is a caring church. Our church is a church on the move. So if any of you want to be a member of the Los Angeles Community Church, the doors of the church is open to you. If you want to be a member of the Los Angeles Community Church, the doors of the church is open to you. Anytime you want, just come on up and say, I want to be a member in Jesus' name. Now some of you may not be ready for membership. You may not want to become a member. But I hope that you today will desire to be a disciple of Jesus. I hope that you will want that blood that was shed on Calvary to be effective for you. That blood on Calvary was shed for you and for I. We can have forgiveness of sins. We can have a new lease on life. We can have a new clean slate. All we have to do is confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. Yes. The Bible said, you shall be saved. Yes. You will be delivered. You will be translated out of the devil's camp into the army of the living God. Yes. You will be taken out of the realm of darkness and translated into the kingdom of light. You will be taken out of the pathway to death and destruction and be led on the pathway of eternal life. So today, we're making a new call. Not just to be saved, but to become a disciple of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let Jesus be your teacher. Let him show you how to walk on the waters of life. Let him show you how to feed the 5,000. Let him show you how to be a blessing. Let him show you how to heal the sick and, and to raise the dead. Jesus wants to do that for you today. Does anybody want to be a disciple today? Does anyone want to be received the call to discipleship? Today is the day. Today, the Bible says, now is the time of salvation. Now is the day of deliverance. Today, some of us didn't cross over into 2000. 
2012. We left a whole bunch of folk in 2011. Some people that I love, the people that I care for, they did not cross over. You have been given another chance. You've been given another opportunity. This is the golden moment, the golden opportunity to become a disciple of Jesus, to get a new lease on life, a clean slate. All begin today. Today is the day. Today is the day. I'm going to give you a moment. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think about that. 30 seconds. Touch us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. 